what is up precious family how are you guys tonight it's your girl pastora janice batista coming at you guys tonight with another video i hope that you guys are excited as i am for tonight's word i hope you guys had an amazing day as you guys can see by today's title god put this word in my spirit this morning but i couldn't get to you guys till now but this is what i really feel from the lord amen the more amen that your enemies oppress you amen the greater your anointing is going to be so if you guys are going through some things tonight i hope that you guys are ready to get into the word i hope you guys are ready to mature i hope you guys are ready to go to the next level i hope that you guys are happy joyful and just ready to get into it amen so let's get started amen um and definitely let me know who is tuning in in the chat so i could definitely take a moment to say hello to you guys today okay so we have let's jump into it amen psalms 9 9 god bless you laura my love god bless you sweetie thank you so much for joining us tonight amen if you guys could write this down amen psalms 9 9 amen and this is what the word of the lord says amen it says that the lord is a stronghold amen for the oppressed amen and a stronghold in times of trouble amen god bless you greetings from india god bless you guys amen so what does it mean amen when the lord is a stronghold to the oppressed one of the things amen that the lord was really putting in my heart for for you guys today amen is that oppression is a serious thing amen sometimes the people who are in the body of christ god bless you familia mata amen Nunez, God bless you. Yahaira, God bless you guys. Ashley, welcome. Amen. Thank you so much for tagging your friends. Don't forget to like and share this video so other people can get on into the room. Amen. So when we talk about oppression, amen, oppression is a serious thing. Why is oppression a serious thing to the body of believers, to the body of Christ, right? It's a serious thing because the devil and and his evil agents his disgusting agents right they literally are building a reputation okay on destroying the the people of god and i know that that may be hard amen for some of you guys to understand but i'm gonna try to break it down as baby uh, in little barney steps okay when you look at the Bible and you look at the word, no matter where you're reading, you could be reading in, in the Old Testament, you could be reading things in the New Testament, and you're going to see the same thing over and over. You're going to see how the people, amen, who come from the pits of hell, who are possessed by Satan himself, you're going to see how that group of people continuously have anger, continuously have animosity against the children of God, against the chosen people of God. And I know that in a perfect world, right, think about this. If it was a perfect world that we all lived in, we wouldn't have any enemies. We wouldn't even deal with them, okay? They would be living on one half of the earth and we would be living on the other half of the earth, right? It wouldn't be no problem. Thank you so much, Ashley. Amen for tagging your friends. I appreciate it. And Mana, amen. May God bless you abundantly. Amen for sharing the gospel amen you know it would be easier for us to live in a world where like i said people wouldn't because even me as an individual as a woman of god right i personally do not like amen god bless you jessica amen um i personally don't like to hang around negative people god bless you jamila sweetheart amen i personally don't like to hang around negative people and especially people who are continuously oppressing other people people who who find joy in humiliating other people or people who find joy in literally criticizing people instead of trying to bring out the best in 
in certain in everyone right because i personally am like that right i like to bring out the best in people i don't like people to look at the worst in themselves because i had to learn myself to not find the worst in myself so when you go through certain things in your own life right where you literally you know, have to pick, find the strength in God, find the strength in yourself, right? To pick yourself up. That's difficult. That takes, that's like a war <laughs> with yourself. I don't know if you guys can agree. Amen. I don't know if you guys can, can understand. Amen. And, and it's just so difficult to pick yourself up when people spit on you, when people kick you, when people ridicule you. But one of the things that I've learned, right, from, from my enemies, one of the things that I've learned from the people that, that hate me, that criticize me, that ridicule me, that, that can't stand me is that I literally today can say that I literally pity them. I literally feel so bad for those individuals because they have no life they have no joy in their heart they have no love they don't know what true like they're held captive by the devil even though i would love for them to be free i would love for them to take off the, the spiritual blindfolds right off of their eyes but the reality is that god does everything for a reason and he even allows our enemies and the people who oppress us in some way, shape, or form to literally be the ones that catapult us into our blessing. And I wanted to remind you guys that word today because I felt it from the Lord. We, we're talking about according to his word in Psalms 9, it says the Lord is a stronghold, amen, for the oppressed. That means that the Lord in his training training in his upbringing and the way he wants you to be built right this is the reason why i have a, a woman's membership a spiritual warfare training membership because i need you guys to understand this right it's a part of your training the lord is a stronghold for the oppressed the people that that we're training and we're equipping they have to learn what you have to know what it's like to be oppressed you have to get familiar with being oppressed you have to know what is like amen to live under spiritual bondage so you can literally understand the power of the enemy so you can understand the power of god you see it's easy for somebody to preach to you and talk to you about oppression and they never been oppressed they can't even testify it but somebody who has been oppressed can literally testify to you how they got themselves out of it with the help and the guidance of the holy spirit right so when you learn in in the midst of the storm, right? In the midst of the enemy oppressing you, in the midst of your enemies trying to do you wrong, you learn that the, the Lord is your stronghold in those moments. He's your stronghold in the times of trouble. So when you are being faced with trouble, when you're being faced with opposition, you literally don't have to worry in the storm, even though I know you are. I've done it. I, it's easy for me to tell you, yo, don't worry about it. But there have been many moments when I was in a storm that I was worrying about it. But you know why I was worrying about it? Because I was giving the enemy a little bit more power than they actually deserved, right? And today I was talking about that with a sister in Christ this morning. And while we were talking about it, we was like going back and forth and stuff on just, you know, life and in general with things like that, right? There was a point in my life where certain people would do certain things to me, right? Certain people, I would wonder like, why don't we get along? We're right. We're close, like kind of like family, right? As you can say, I'm like, why is it that they continuously put me in drama why is it that this big group of people don't like me right i'm like what is like it could get to a point when you're getting oppressed because the anointing is so big on your life it could things could get to a point where you just feel like you don't even belong in this world and that's really what god wants you to understand he doesn't want you to take your life he doesn't want you to feel bad and be ridiculed and be like man like like you a little booger or something he wants you to understand because the word says it he says you're in the world but you're not of the world like we if you were of this world the world would accept you they would love you they would praise you but sometimes because you're not of this world right 
the enemy is going to continuously try to make you feel like something is wrong with you because you don't fit into the world. You don't fit into what they want to see in people. Like you're not basically, no matter how much you try, right, to fit in with certain people at the end of the day, God bless you, Miss Karen, my love, amen, you know, at the end of the day, the more and more you try to fit in with a group of people, right, Miss Gina? It is not going to work because there are certain people, amen, that are assigned to you. They're assigned to your life. They And not only that, because some people think that they are, like, for example, I'm going to use me as an example, right? There are many women that may be assigned to my life because not only did did, did I, you know, open up myself to, to the Lord and allow him to use me, right? But they sometimes we feel like certain people are assigned to our life only for the glory, right? Only for the anointing, only for the blessing. And that's not how it rolls in the kingdom of God. Sometimes before you could get to the glory status, before you could like literally see everything the way you truly genuinely want to see it, you have to understand in the spiritual realm that some people are connected to the broken parts of who you were, right? So who you were in those broken seasons are going to help you in the future. And not only you, they're going to help other people because that's the way God designed it. He designed me, amen, to help Jennifer. He designed Jennifer to help Wendy. And Wendy helps Gina. And Gina helps Jamila. And Jamila helps Miss Keisha, right? It's just a spinning cycle. And, and Miss Keisha helps Yahira. And Yahira helps Ashley, right? It's like a dynamite effect because if we all try to act perfect and like we all high and mighty women of God and we're so holier than thou, right? Look at the women that be sometimes in those religious churches, right? Don't you see women that all look the same and they walk around looking high and mighty, right? But does that really bring the gospel to to people in the street and, and people who are broken and people who are going through storms and going through things? No, because they try to sell you something that sometimes is not in the scripture because of their, and what gets in the way of that? Their arrogance, right? Their rules, their regulations, right? Their inability to meet you where you at. So it gets hard for people when they're faced with the battles. It gets hard for people when they're dealing with stress, when they're dealing with anxiety, when they're dealing with oppression, because you're going to bump into some people. Listen to this. You're going to bump into some people in the kingdom of God who literally want to oppress other people in the kingdom. So it's like you're in the kingdom, supposedly fighting against one kingdom, but your prior their priorities are not on right. So sometimes it makes it harder for the real anointed people to rise up and take position and, and take the, the mighty Zor sword of Zion and fight in the battle field and literally armor up. Why? Because of these people who are in the kingdom positioned on the front line, supposedly there to help you, supposedly there for our service, right? But that's why Jesus says you're going to notice certain, certain people by their fruit. So it becomes difficult as a Christian. I'm telling you as a woman of God being in ministry for 15 years. These are the things that I've battled with. Because I've seen people in the front line and I'd be like, what the hell are they doing there? Like they are they on a suicide mission because the way their mindset is set up. It's just the way it's set up. is just like something they don't click. Right. And they'll look at you like you crazy and something in your brain don't click because you don't get it, but it's dumb. They don't get it because some people place themselves in positions, right? Who are not equipped for those positions. And just because they look right and they talk right, people put them there, but they not there because there's no, they not really there because of the kingdom put them there because there's no anointing over their life. There's no oil. There's nothing sustaining them because they got no testimony. They got no passion for the things of God. So all they got is fancy words and, and, and a, and a, a great ability to sell certain people a good game, right? Like, Oh, I could, I'm here to serve you or whatever like that. But are you here to serve, right? The kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus said, you are going to be able to tell 
who is who by their fruit. So it becomes, it's difficult for P women of God who are trying to develop themselves in spiritual warfare because the people who are supposed to be equipped don't have discernment. And then they go to these churches and everybody's having these spiritual impartations, right? Where there's no order. The people have, they, they make all these big groups, right? And it's like, boom, boom. Yeah, we're growing. We're growing. Let's give people positions. Let's give them licenses. Let's give them titles, right? And it becomes an impartation, something that was supposed to be created with a kingdom purpose. Now, all of a sudden has to transition into something commercialized. Does that make sense? So sometimes we have to be careful, right? When you, when you dealing with spiritual warfare groups that are very commercialized, that have sold the gospel and sold the licenses, okay? Sold the leaderships, they sold them. Everybody could just go and have it, right? And then you look and you're like, wait a minute, something here doesn't click, right? So who, who's at fault for that? Is the leadership, is the higher rubs because their passion and their greed, amen, and their, their, their heart to try to sell you an image, right? Starts to get the best of them. And that's where you become, you start to feel even more oppressed in the kingdom of God, because sometimes you don't know where to turn. You don't know who's authentic. You don't know who's real. You know, you looking for the oil, you know, you looking for the, for the, the growth, you know, you looking for the wisdom. You're looking for the spirit of God. You're looking, amen, for the power, the anointing, the glory, you looking for purpose, amen. You're looking for God and you want him to shine his light over your life and over your circumstance and put things in order so that you can move forward so that you can, you know, see an anointing that is going to break the yokes. But when you belong to groups that literally, we could call them care, care, care groups. Okay. When you start to belong to these care groups, amen, that look at you only as a number and don't look at you like a human being. If they cannot serve a person, purpose over your life and they cannot pour into your life on a weekly basis that you feel the kingdom. Like you supposed to feel the kingdom when somebody has the kingdom, they don't have to sit there looking at notes every time because the spirit is going to talk. The spirit is going to lead the spirit. Amen. Is going to transition the people because he's the one that knows. Amen. What everybody who is the hearer, right? The Bible says, don't just be a doer of the word but be a hearer of the word. Why does God want people to not only be a part of what the word um, does, but he wants people to be a part of what the word says. Amen. So that when you can, because if you don't know how to hear, you're not going to know how to do. You're not going to know how to behave, right? You're not going to learn how to act because you're always going to be so structured. You're always going to be so, oh, let me make sure that I'm well pleasing to the man of God or to the woman of God. And it's like, no, you can't live with that type of yoke. You can't. This is why I personally, you know, I love this online ministry because I don't have to give an account to certain people who don't like what I, there's, you know how many pastors do not like my lives? <laughs> you would be so surprised how many pastors, men of God, women of God come on my videos for years. They listen to it and they hear what I say. And in their mind and in their heart, they be like, Esa habla tanta. you know what? They be like, that girl talks a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of this a whole bunch of that in their mindset, right? That's the way they feel. But what makes them feel like that is their inability to be able to meet people halfway. So because God has given me that ability to meet people halfway and we in the kingdom, their spiritual eyes, they can't see the fact that I'm working for the kingdom in a different way. Because in their mindset, I'm supposed to be up under them doing what they want me to 
do how they want me to do it, saying it how they want me to say it, and delivering things how they want me to deliver things. I'm supposed to look the way they want me to look, smell the way they want me to smell, post how they want me to post. Like They are controllers. They are manipulators. And the reasons why they don't grow and they criticize me and look at me is because they wondering in their mind, why does God keep blessing that girl? Why does God keep elevating that girl? Why doesn't she stop? Why doesn't she, you know, fold under the oppression? Why does she cry? And, and is, why is her ability able to be so transparent, right? And it's because I understand in the kingdom of God that oppression is part of the process. So I don't try to hide it. You know, I'm, I just try to handle things differently in a way where it doesn't hurt the body of Christ, but my honesty is automatically going to hurt the people that want to hurt the body. So if you want all the type of Christian, right, that likes to hurt the body of Christ, you're not going to like my videos because you're one of those type of people that I'm talking supposedly crap about. So you're going to look at it and quickly disqualify me because I bring the words that I bring. Amen. It comes like a double edged sword because it comes from the Bible. It comes from the spirit of truth. It comes from a place of zealousness. It comes from my zeal from God. It comes from my anointing, my ability, my street smart, my book smart, everything that I've learned, I bring it to the table and I yield it. Amen. Before Christ. And I say, Christ, this is my calling. This is what you gave me. This is what you called me to do. Right. But I had to face the enemies. I had to cry many times. I had to doubt myself many times. I had to battle with the spirit of God many times. I had to battle with my family my husband's family, my friends, brothers in Christ. I battled so much trying to figure it out, trying to figure out what is my calling, trying to figure out what is my purpose, trying to figure out why certain people hated me so much, trying to figure out why they dislike me, trying to figure out why they seeking my life, why they seek to devour me, why they, if I'm not even bothering them, right? It's like, why y'all bothering me so much? Why y'all so into my life? If y'all disqualify me so much, it should be easy. Delete me. Don't look at nothing in my life and just keep it moving. Like, just let me live, right? But some people, some enemies, right? They are not going to want you to live. They're going to want you to die. <laughs> and this is why the Bible says that the enemy, right? He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Destroy. So there are people that are sent by the pit to hell, amen, that are going to desire your death. They're going to desire your funeral. They're going to desire you to be in a bottomless pit without an escape. They're going to want you to not be able to exit. They're going to want you to not be able to live. Not. It's just like, you know, because that's what life is about. When we deal with responsibilities, when we are dealing with the kingdom, right? The Bible says, listen to this whoever in proverbs 14 31 it says that whoever oppresses a poor man insults his maker do you know what that means that means that it doesn't matter who you are when you oppress a poor man a poor woman it doesn't mean that it has to be always about money it means that a person who is poor can be poor in spirit when somebody is broken when somebody is shattered when somebody is wounded and you oppress that person, you are insulting his maker because God sometimes, right? He wants us to sometimes <clears throat> go through the trouble. He sometimes wants us to go through the stress. He wants us to know what it's like to be in spiritual warfare training. He wants us to be wounded sometimes. He wants us because he wants you to see his power and how his his power can heal you. He wants you to forgive your enemies in the midst of the pain. He wants you to grow past what they did to you. He wants you to not look at them, you know, so much and give them such a high place of authority and power and anointing and glory over your life. And I know that sometimes that may be hard to do, 
Because sometimes when we wounded, right, we looking at what's going on with the people who dislike us. We looking at why is it that they can't stand us? We're trying to figure it out. And the point is that when you insult somebody who is poor in spirit or even somebody who is happy, right? The Lord is never going to honor you. This is why he says, but he who is generous to who? To the needy honors him. When you are generous to people who need help, people who are trying to grow, people who are trying to mature, people who have an open heart, a willingness, amen, to see things from a positive perspective, right? Those are the people, amen, that the Lord are going to honor. He is going to increase their territory. And I believe that for many of you tonight, that the Lord is going to increase your territory, amen. He is going to expand your wisdom. He's going to expand your knowledge. He's going to expand your faith, right? He's going to expand your your, your mindset so that you can start focusing it on positive things. So you can start surrounding yourself with people who literally want to be around you, who want to pour into you. You guys should not be surrounded, amen, with people. And I'm so sorry, I can't read all the comments, but I will try to get to them amen you know you gotta surround yourself amen with people that love you like people who inspire amen to be around you and your ministry and they're not intimidated because other people speak bad about you they're not intimidated because a a big a big group of gorillas don't like you that shouldn't intimidate you know dumb because if they love you they're willing to and this is why i love god so much because when other people you see when god wants to expand your anointing when he wants to expand your territory what other people are not willing to do for you when they not willing to go above and beyond with you in the pit and be like because it's easy for everybody to like right now it's easy for everybody to love me and want to stand by me because everybody loves me. But when you, those people that really stood by you, when nobody else loved you, when nobody else liked you, when nobody else was feeling you, those are the people, amen, that you supposed to remember forever, amen. Those are the people that you never supposed to forget because those are the ones who started with you. Those are the ones that God equipped you with. Those are the ones that he designed amen with a purpose amen this is why the bible says that when you learn to appreciate the little things in life you he can bless you with something bigger he can bless you with something greater but when was the last time that you thank god for the people that oppressed you when was the last time that you was able to look at a group of people who really disliked you and really disqualified you and and wrote you off when was the last time that you ever thank god for that right and we have to learn amen to thank god amen for you know the the people that have hurt us amen and and literally did us dirty why do we why do i say that to you amen look at what isaiah 1 7 says it says learn to do good it says seek justice you know what that means to learn to do good in the midst of your haters oppressing you you have to learn to do good that means that your mindset has to start shifting away from the problem it has to start shifting away like you see the group of people yeah they don't like you yeah they're ridiculing you yeah they're looking for more gossip and things to say about you that's why you need to make yourself sometimes unavailable amen for those people i don't care if it's your mother-in-law it could be your sister-in-law because when people hate you listen to what happened to me yesterday yesterday i'm in a season where god is doing some really amazing things in my life 
And I really see his presence and his power moving in such a special way. And I had a dream with two of my oppressors, right? That they were trying to sneak, be sneaky and be conniving, right? And it was like, for some reason, we made it to like some type of hall of fame or something like that. And the, there was two of my oppressors that were trying to tell the people of the hall of fame to, they were trying to disqualify us, right? And trying to like, literally, like, you know, when somebody puts Put you in a hall of fame that means that you worked your butt off that means that you did something for years and years until you was able to get results but not for yourself for other people so when you get put on a hall of fame it's because obviously your presence it brings something to the table so when I, you know, when I was interpreting the dream, I'm like, okay, I see what we're doing in the kingdom. It's obviously something is happening where, you know, God is recognizing us. The kingdom of God is recognizing things that we've done. And these people, for me to see them in my dream, these are people who I don't give access to me, but watch my Facebook seven days a week, 365 days a year. They so suffocated with my life and they know who they are <laughs> because those are people people that I want nothing to do with and I and and they frustrated because they like they look at me and they're like who does she think she is why doesn't she give us access into her life why doesn't she you know and why we could do whatever we want to other people but with her we can't because I have a big boundary amen that has a big paintbrush and that paintbrush and that boundary is the blood of Jesus okay and that blood it qualifies me. That blood, it cleanses me. Amen. That blood, it redeems me. Amen. That blood, it gives me value. That blood, it helps me see my identity. It helps me recognize who I am in Christ. It helps me recognize where I came from. That blood, amen, is, is symbolic, amen, over my life where it's a boundary that they cannot cross. Their witchcraft can't cross it. Their, um, their evil altars can't cross it. Amen. Their demonic agents can't cross it because I'm covered. Amen. By the blood of Jesus. Why do you think when the Israelites, amen, were told to put blood on their doorposts as a symbolic thing, why do you think that death had to bypass the home? It's because the blood was holding weight. And I feel like most of us, we have to remember that tonight. If you've forgotten it, it's okay. If you've been too busy, caught up with work, caught up with problems, caught up with issues and things like that, it's okay. It happens to the best of us. But tonight, it should be a new night. Tonight, you should be so focused on the blood and pleading the the blood amen over your life and over your circumstances so that you know because that blood is what's gonna expand your territory that blood is what's gonna bring the destiny helpers and that blood amen is going to you know rebuke the devil and stop him dead in his tracks and even not only that but I saw another person another destiny blocker somebody that I don't deal with for years but these are witches I know that these three people that I saw in my dream two I saw together that they're related mother and daughter the other one is one from an old church that we used to go to and the Lord reveals these people to me in my dreams who I don't even care about I could care less about those people what they doing who they doing who they screwing I could literally care less but because I'm connected to the blood you know what the blood does the blood causes your spiritual antenna when you are sleeping sleeping, amen, to fight for you. It causes you to see secret things that are taking place, amen, behind your back, secret things that they are plotting, secret desires, secret witchcraft work, agendas, amen, that are being done to conspire against you so that you can get up, amen, and plead your cause. That's why Isaiah 1 7 says that when we're being oppressed, we need to learn to what? 
to do good. Amen. Mind, we need to learn to mind our business, take our energy off of the people who, because it's like, you may be like, Pastora, but why I got to mind my business if they're trying to hurt me? I got to defend myself. I got to figure this thing out. No, you're going to be trying to figure out what, why those people don't like you for 40 years in the wilderness. Those people are going to probably die not liking you. Like, do you think I would love for all of my enemies to love me? I would love to love my enemies and literally be one with them and, and not have any anger or animosity towards them. But the reality of the fact is that I'm, I've am i come to terms with the fact that I've accepted Christ and they have it. And because I have, I have life and they don't. And until they repent and until they yield their heart, you see, it's not my job. It's not, that's not my homework. That's not my responsibility. So the blood, their blood is not going to be on my hands. You see, the blood, Blood. You know, when the Bible talks about other people's blood being on your hands is when you refuse to share Christ, when you refuse to share the gospel, when you keep that to yourself. That's why, right, it's important, right, for for us to share the word. It's important for us to like Christian content. People that are pouring into our lives is important. Amen. Even the last video, thank you guys so much for sharing. It was like 40 something people almost that shared the video. And I was like, oh my God, thank you guys so much. Because when you do that, it helps the ministry grow. It helps us. So, you know, yeah, there may have been many moments where, you know, even maybe now, right now that I started working and now that, you know, my time is a little bit more limited, right? And I'm exhausted. I just pulled an eight hour shift in training and I came home, didn't even get to eat dinner. I'm like, I'm going to, this is my dinner. This is my dinner right now. The word and just sharing it with you guys and just, you know, being one with God and just, you know, there, when you hunger for righteousness, when you hunger for the word, you seek justice, right? But not only do you learn to do good, but you seek just, justice and correct oppression. How do you correct the oppression? You correct the oppression by facing it and by embracing it and understanding that oppression, the only way you could correct it, amen, is by accepting it. If you don't accept it, you're not going to correct it because for you to accept it, that means that you got to come to terms with oppression. You have to come to terms that it cannot fold, it cannot break you. It cannot fold you in half unless you you allow it. You see, that's why the Bible says that greater is he, amen, that is inside of us. Because he that is inside of us is greater than he that is in the world. So the spirit of the living God that is inside of you tonight, that is in you right now, is bigger than your financial problem. Is bigger than the sickness that is attacking you. Is bigger than the people that don't like you. Is bigger than those that despise you you is bigger than that pitch you in. You can't get a job. You can't get a break. Your kids don't want to submit to Christ. Your, your partner doesn't want to go to church. He doesn't want to respect you. Your anointing. He doesn't want to respect what you carry. The people that did you wrong, that they did you dirty, the addictions that you got that you battling with the God who is in you, amen, who is in me is bigger, amen, than the one who is in the world trying to oppress you. Those they they can try for all, for the rest of their life, for the next 40 years in the second heavens, in the pit, in the pit to hell, in the, the biggest altars in the marine kingdoms. Okay. Those spiritual altars, those, you know, altars of death, the, the gate, of hell itself, amen, can not, amen, go up against you and who you are and what you carry. But you see how it's so easy, right, for us to sometimes fall into the pit and we, you see how we feel sometimes like, like little ants up against the big giants. We feel like what, like we just care so much about their validation 
It doesn't matter who doesn't validate you because if you go to one city and they despise you, matter of fact, the whole city could despise you. But if you go to another city, even if you look for three, even if three accept you, be happy with those three. Let those three equip you. Let those three empower you. Let those three be used for God's glory in your life and in return, right? You bring justice. Look at what it says. Learn to do good, seek justice, correct oppression, and bring justice to the fatherless. Amen. And plead the widow's cause. That means that if this is why the Bible says, seek the kingdom of God first and all of his righteousness. And he says that then everything else will be added. So while you're going through your storm and while your enemies are plotting and plotting and plotting how they're going to get you and how they're going to ridicule you, all you have to do is do good. All you have to do is do away with evil people. All you have to do is try to seek justice. What does it mean to do good? It means that the bad decisions that you've been making, you start to correct them things and you start to align your life and do away with the bad choices. That's what it means to seek justice. That means to stay away from people who are full of injustice, people who are unrighteous, you know, people who are, you know, walking around, amen, higher than the authorities, higher than justice, okay? Higher than, than, than the spiritual realm, okay? You have to correct the oppression. You got to correct the wrongs amen, that, that, that are happening around you and you got to bring justice to the fatherless. What does it mean to, to bring justice? Can somebody tell me in the, in the, um, in the comments, what does it mean? Amen. And we're reading from Isaiah 117. Amen. What does it mean to bring justice to the fatherless? It means that when somebody's father walks out on them, when they leave them like an orphan, you bring justice to their life. How can you bring justice to somebody who, because when you fatherless, you have no validation. It's like you don't even know who you are because if your own mother and father, why do you think the Bible? Bible says that when your own mother and father, they despise you and they abandon you. Why does the Bible say, why does the scripture teach us that God will lift us up? God will pick us up. Amen. He will adopt us. Amen. He will give us DNA, his spiritual DNA. He will give us, a. you know, he calls us to be a royal priesthood, right? So if you're in spiritual warfare, right? Why should you feel why are you walking around amen like you are orphan you are not Corey an orphan none of you guys are orphans we are not orphans even if your mother left you when you was a baby your dad left you walked out on you you may not even know who your dad is you may not have seen him maybe he never took you to prom right maybe he never took you to a daddy daughter dance like maybe you may have gone through some sexual abuse with your dad or with certain men in your life, right? That have done you wrong. But that's what it means to plead the widow's cause. That means that widows sometimes have to deal with difficult things in life. So when you got people who are fatherless, who don't have, uh, uh, who don't have, what's the right word? Who don't have an identity, okay? When you're dealing with fatherless people, you know, children, men or women of God, and they don't have an identity. Sometimes we, it don't matter your age. That's why Paul told Timothy, don't let people look down on you because you're young. Because if the anointing and the glory is over your life, you can make an old person feel like they got identity. As long as the spirit of the Lord is with you, you can validate people in the kingdom of God because you got authority to do it when you plead the blood. You see, when the blood is the is there and you draw the line and you got the boundaries. That's why I don't give certain people the time of day. You don't like me. That's fine. You don't like my ministry. That's fine. You don't want to be a part of the DEA squad. That's fine. I'm not going to allow your opinion. Okay. Your negativity and your, you know, mindset to distract me. I'm not even going to give it no value, right? It has no value in my brain, but there was a point 
in in time when I did, you know, fall and I did crumble and I did like, oh my God, like, right? But when you grow with God, when you grow with his spirit, right? You start to realize that you decide, right? Who you give value to. You decide what's important in your life. You decide who gets to rent space in your brain and who doesn't. And that's the beautiful thing about God that we don't have to give any space to our enemies. We don't have to give power to those evil altars. We don't have to give power to the devil. We don't have to think about our enemies so much. Who cares about them? Let the dead bury the dead. God called us, amen, to bring people back to life. He called us to give people identity in the midst of our confusion, in the midst of us trying to figure it out, in the midst of us not getting it, in the midst of us, you know, feeling forgotten and abandoned by God. He gives us a special identity and a special place and a special ability to continue growing, right? in his presence to continue professing his name to continue seeking the power of God, right? To continue seeking the power of and the glory, right? He gives us that power and that ability when we are weak, right? So this is why when you're professing that you're weak, the doesn't the Bible teach us let the weak say what? What does the Bible, I'm going to look in the comments. What does the Bible teach us to say when we are weak? Amen. I, I can't wait to see what you guys put in the topic. I can't wait to see that you guys haven't fallen asleep on me. (laughs) Okay. And that you guys are listening and that you guys are paying attention and that you guys get the word and that you guys understand the word. Amen. What does God? Yes. He says, let the weak great Jennifer and Corey, let the weak say what? I am strong and I want you to remember that because you're going to need that mindset, amen, to embrace what God is going to do. So you don't have to complain about, I don't have a job. You don't got to complain, amen, about your sickness. You don't have to embrace what you're dealing with in this season. Embrace it, whether it happened because of witchcraft, whether it happened because of the oppression, whether it happened because of science, I don't know. Regardless of why you're dealing with those struggles right now, I want you to let the Lord defend you. Look at what Psalm 72, 4 says, amen. It says, may he defend the cause of the poor of the um of the poor of the people and give deliverance amen to the children of the needy and crush the oppressor amen do you know what that means amen it means that he's gonna defend your cause tonight he's gonna defend your battles he's gonna fight for you amen he's gonna pull out that sword amen now in the spirit if you believe it and he is going to show people that there is a boundary of blood that they cannot pass, amen, they cannot overstep their boundaries, they cannot overstep their, their who they are and where they are in the pits of hell, who, whoever your enemies are, no matter what their level is, no matter what their rank is, amen, they cannot go up against the man of, of, of the battles of the Lord's army, like they cannot, amen, go up against the Lord, they cannot touch the anointed, the Bible says it, touch not my anointed. You cannot, if you're anointed, amen, if you're called for this, if you are sealed for this, amen, the Lord is going to bring deliverance, amen, to the children tonight who need it, and he is going to crush the oppressor. So I believe it, even with the dreams that I had last night, I woke up and I was like, oh my God, why did I see these witches in my dream last night? I'm like, dag, even in my dreams, I can't escape them. <laughs> even in my dreams, because I, they, they're people that, they, why do you think the enemy frustrates us so much? Why do you think he brings these familiar spirits? Why do you think the Lord allows the enemy to reveal, amen, his secrets? Because the Bible is clear, amen, when he loves us, amen, when he cares carries us when God has decided to be your, when God decided to be our father, when Jesus decided to get up on that cross, okay, 
And when he decided to go on the cross of Calvary and die for you and I, amen, he did that with a purpose. He did that with a passion. He did that knowing, amen, that he was going to be able to go up against the gates of hell, going up against all those evil altars, all those sea monsters, all those crazy creatures, amen, all those spiritual realms and territories. Like, that's the beautiful thing about Jesus. That's the beautiful thing about the cross. That's the beautiful thing about Christianity. But don't you notice that is the number one religion that is tarnished by the world? It is spit on by everybody. It is persecuted by everybody. Why? Because there's so much grace, amen, in who Jesus Christ is. There is so much grace for our life that we don't even deserve. Like, do you know that the grace that God has extended to me in my life, I don't even deserve it. Like, I'm not even worthy amen of all of the grace that the lord has given me like i am you know the least of everybody on this chat that probably deserves god's grace as gracious as he has been to me so if he has given us so much grace right doesn't that mean that we should start to walk around with a more grateful heart with a with a heart and a mindset that is more committed to christ you should be more committed to the person Execution. You should embrace it like the apostles did. This is why they understood. This is why they was like, yo, if they don't like you and they don't like me, like, yo, you know what? Praise the Lord. Like, you know what? They don't like none of us because they don't like the truth. But you know what? Since we rocking together and we got the spirit of God, you know what? Let's go. Let's go. We're going to preach. Oh, but they're going to put us in prison. It don't matter. We're going to preach in the prison and the chains are going to break and people are going to be free and people are going to be delivered and people are going to know, right? What? That we did it right with the with the power and the name of who of jesus christ all of the miracles everything so when we are feeling down and out you just gotta remember the bible remember the scripture remember how great amen god wants to expand your territory remember all of the amazing places where he wants to take you and let today be a new day where you're not gonna give the enemy no more power make up your mind right now in in the name of Jesus, say, you know what? She's right. Pastora is right. I am not going to give my enemies no power. Screw them. Like, Lord, I want them to be saved. You know, I forgive them. Like, you know, I don't wish them no harm, but you know what? Enough is enough. If they don't like me, if they don't find no value in who I am, who cares? I'm no longer going to allow them to rent no, no space in my mind. I'm no longer going to allow them to dictate to me who I am. I am going to believe this word. I'm going to embrace this word. Amen. I'm going to rebuke my enemies. I'm going to rebuke my negative dreams. Amen. And I'm going to hold tight to what the word says and who the word says that I am. And I'm going to surround myself with a ministry, a membership, a spiritual warfare training, a church, a, a ministry or home church, amen, that is going to believe in me and is going to help me and is going to empower me to walk in order, amen, to walk in boldness, amen, to fear the kingdom, to work for the kingdom, amen, not against the kingdom, to stand firm, because when you are a watchman in the kingdom of God, planted and rooted in a church, planted in a ministry, they not gonna like you. When you out there and you standing in the door as an usher, and you backing up your pastors, and you loyal, guess what? The wolf are not going to like you when you stand there and you worship amen with all your heart and soul when you dance amen for the lord they are not going to like you because you are the light in the house of god standing there against the darkness when you start to ask for tithes and offerings amen they are not going to like you because you're a kingdom builder amen you got a big vision amen you got a big mindset there are so many any reasons when you start to preach, when you start to teach, when you start to cast out devils, when you start to be used by God, there is always going to be a group of people that are willing and ready to do it for free. They willing to oppress you. They willing to degrade you. They willing to persecute you. They willing to spread lies about you. They are willing to throw rocks on your name. They are willing to devour 
your children, they are willing to do it all so that they can get you out the way. Amen. So that your light can be. That's why the Bible says, take your light and don't put it under the table. Amen. The Bible says, take your light. Amen. And put it on top of the table. Amen. Put it so everybody put the light where everybody else could see it and stop hiding it. Stop feeling bad about it. Amen. And embrace it. How many of you guys are ready? Can you guys say I'm ready to embrace the light? Amen in the comment, amen, that you are ready, amen, to walk with a godly mindset, that you are ready to look, look for other people, if you really feel that lonely, look for a, but look, even if you join our membership in April, because it's closed now, even if you ready in April, and you like, even Miss Corey was like ready to, to join the membership, I was like, no, hold on, we're gonna open in April, right, even if you ready to surround yourself with other people that have been rejected, and persecuted stop trying to hang out amen with the with the crew amen that looks all you know well put together and that looks all fancy dancy right and that is out there you know promoting something that really ain't what it's supposed to be amen and surround yourself with people who are like-minded i'm pretty sure when the disciples were together you know what made them like-minded the fact that they got beat up together okay the fact that they got persecuted so if you got if your mother-in-law don't like you guess what and she fake and phony mine don't like me either okay if you got sister-in-laws and brother-in-laws and and cousins and aunties and uncles who don't like you guess what they don't like me either so we could sit down and chill and talk about it for hours right i can still tell you what they did to me and tell you and still testify that nothing that they did has broken me it hasn't stopped my my coins from coming in it hasn't stopped my blessings amen it hasn't stopped me from moving and growing and moving forward if anything i just look i can look them straight in the face and be so cordial even though they can't be cordial with me or sometimes they might right whenever they feel like it because they'll be cordial in your face but the minute you leave it's like choo, 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 and they think you don't know they think you dumb but you know you know the truth you know when people like you you know when people love you you know right when people are willing to go above and beyond to make you feel loved, to make you feel safe, to make you feel validated. Amen. So when people try to come at you with that fake and phony stuff and you don't believe it and you don't eat it and you're not willing, right, to digest it, right, what's going to happen to you? God is going to elevate you like in their face. Why do you think it happened to David? He had to learn to devour the lions and the bears and, and the Philistines over and over. It was a countless battle. Like David had to fight the Philistines so much. Like it was like, it got to the point that he, he even fought them even in his old age. Can you imagine? Did you guys remember right when David was so mad with the Philistines? I think we went through it once in one of the, the classes when David got so mad and he went down to fight the Philistines. And the one of the one of the men was like, No, one of his um armor bearers was like, No, you're not gonna fight this battle because he saw him in his weakness in his old age. And David's like, Man, I want a hundred battles, like I'm gonna keep on to the day I die fighting you know this battle this countless battle but like i said the philistines you know all those people that came from the pits of hell didn't like david they never liked david he was willing to fight them even until the end but you have a you have a decision to make right are you gonna be like david fighting the philistines over and over like let the dead bury the dead let those people who don't like you and they're because they ain't gonna like you and their children don't like you and guess what their children's children ain't gonna like you okay and they're their children's children ain't gonna like you this is the reason why when david was called and anointed by god this is why saul was so angry because his son jonathan was so faithful and loyal to david and his own father couldn't understand why are you so faithful to this man of god but what happens sometimes right when god is in a certain situation right his own dad was the one that caused him 
right, to die and cause him to perish. But at the end of the day, we don't have to live like those people live. Like we can make different decisions. We can look at certain people and if they for us, they for us. If they not for us, they not for us. But at least we're not going to lose. Amen a good night's sleep, right? We're not going to stop going to the gym. We're not going to stop progressing and looking for work and looking for promotions and looking for greater opportunities and looking for a bigger homes, right? Looking for nicer vehicles and looking to prosper the church of God and, and work ministry and go to prisons and, and just be progressing. Like that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to progress at home as individuals amen in the midst of our enemies oppressing us so we can focus on the kingdom amen because if our own house is in order that means that we're going to be able to contribute amen to the house of God even today as my husband and I was doing the taxes there's two things that people hate to pay people hate to pay the IRS right how many of y'all hate that when you got to pay the IRS and they take too much money out of your check it's horrible okay but you got to pay the uh, it feels like the more money you make the more money they take that is literally how it is and it's so hard to be responsible with the irs to pay you know uncle sam to pay caesar it's hard to do that and on top of that you like dag and i gotta pay god and you try to look at the pastor and be like mm -mm, it's the pastor it's not god i'm paying it's the pastor and you try to you know get out of it if you don't pay your taxes the IRS can come and garnish and take everything from you. And if the IRS could do that, what makes us think that God can't do that? If God can take everything from us, can you only imagine what he can give us if we was obedient to his word? If we walked as good stewards in the earth, if we really did, amen, what we were called to do and love people the way we called to do, love people, support people the way we, we called to support people, can you you only imagine what God can do and the things that he can open up in your life like the job that you got and the money that you paying right now if you was a good steward God would expand it amen he could bless it he could multiply it for his glory because as long as you got a good heart and as long as you got a good mindset the Bible says that whatever you need all you have to do is ask but you got to be willing to work for it you got to be willing to put your best foot forward and you got to be willing to stand in truth in front of the enemy and face all type of oppression um persecution and all type of ridicule and if you guys are willing to do that and type in amen amen in the comment section and come into agreement with this word and i am going to be if you guys want some prayer amen go on to my website destroyingevilaltars.com if you have a special prayer request <clears throat> you can put it here you could put it on the website send it to me privately if you want to send it to me here amen in in the facebook chat send it to me privately in the facebook chat and i will read amen your petition amen and i will see that you came into agreement with this word and that you are not going to let the enemy like to after today's live like you better not let the enemy mess with you tomorrow mess with you on friday like this better be a word amen that holds you down for at least a month or two at least right at least a month or two you better remember like mm, you know what that word is gonna hold me down at least for a month or two at least so i get it together at least you know till i move forward at least amen till i do what i gotta do amen so i love you guys i bless you guys in the mighty name of jesus amen i gotta get going because i haven't eaten nothing and your girl is starving and it's already late <clears throat> i don't know what i'm gonna have i might just have a, a croissant or i don't know if i'm gonna warm up amen my food downstairs but i'm gonna go eat this food amen yes jennifer sealed by the blood of jesus and i am just going to like i said just rejoice amen rejoice because it's another day that the lord has made rejoice because you overcame the trial rejoice and you know because of everything like just be grateful amen for another day be grateful for what god has done be grateful for what god is doing and be grateful for what he is going to do amen thank him in advance for that expansion take him 
thank him in advance for taking care of your enemies and proclaim that all day tonight. Say, my enemies are handled. Amen. You guys are handled. Amen. You guys are rebuked. Amen. You guys are sent back to the pits of hell. You know, I blow out those evil altars i blow out those candles in the name of jesus you know holy spirit rebuke my name from those altars rebuke you know remove my pictures remove my belongings like all you have to do is just plead and come into agreement with god and he is going to come in agreement with you amen yes thank you the jennifer's like thank you god in advance amen for that new home yes declare it believe it go on pinterest and get ready amen start looking for your your curtains now start looking for your sofa now amen for whoever needs a job amen start looking for that new job and believe it amen yes return to sender all opposition everything that is being sent your way believe it and return it back say god i thank you because you sending it back because it may look like that holds no weight it may look like it but guess what the bible says that faith is a substance amen of what is unseen amen so if you can start believing that that house is yours before you even get it amen you gotta see jennifer the testimony on how we got this house it is an amazing testimony i don't know if i have i don't i, I spoke about it in a lot of videos i don't remember but you got to believe that something is yours amen without even having it and once you start to believe it once you change your mindset and 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 you start adapting your mindset to spiritual reality instead of physical reality that's when the physical things start to move around in your purpose and i'm believing it that even for this when we open up the membership in april i'm already believing it's gonna be 500 plus women amen my goal i think for this year was a thousand amen women that were gonna sign up to the the dea group and i'm believing it. i don't care what nobody says you're not gonna bust my bubble amen i'm believing that we're gonna have at least we're gonna meet our goal and have 500 women i don't care what nobody says nobody's gonna deteriorate my mindset why because there is not another spiritual warfare membership like this and speaking about the things that we speak about like this so i know what i have i know what god gave me and and I know that I don't have to copy anybody, amen. I've been doing this online for over 10 years, 12 years, and I know what God gave me. I know what he called me to do, and I haven't backed down off of social media, and I've been right here in the same place, same time, all the time, doing what God called me to do, and as long as I'm obedient to him, he is going to expand everything, and he's going to go above and beyond everything that I could have ever asked him for, because he knows my heart, he knows my desire, and he knows, amen, that when I want to get somewhere, and he's called me to get there there is nothing that is going to stop me or get in my way amen so i pray in the name of jesus amen that this word you believe it you receive it and you know that greater things are coming okay ladies so i love you guys i will catch you guys in the next video don't forget to like this video share this video tag your friends in the comment section and if you are watching this video later on youtube don't forget to subscribe turn your notification bell on and let me know in the comment section how this video has blessed your life okay guys so i will catch you guys in the next one bendiciones